So this is a continuation of 7.5 arithmetic sequences. Um, I had a little issue where my wonderful iPhone decided that it was going to do an update and shut down just as I was finishing question two for you here. So I'm going to continue with that. I've got it written here, but I will continue explaining it. So what we were doing again was you were asked to find the sum of this series. So it was minus 4, minus 10, minus 16 to minus 94. So again, if you look at the formula that you might have thought you could use, where you have the first and the last terms, you would have seen that you're missing this a value. You, you know, you don't have the first, sorry, you have the first term, you have the last term, but you don't know how many terms you have, right? So that was the problem. You need to know how many terms. So when you're doing these types of questions, there's often a couple of things, one or two things that are, are missing that you have to try to figure out how to find, right? So this term here, I know what it is. I know its value, but I don't know what number it was. So over here, what we did was we, you uh, got to D is minus six, the A is minus four, but I need to know what term is negative 94. So I put minus 94 here in my equation. Now this is just the equation that you used in sequences, right? The nth term a plus n minus one times d, where n was, the nth term was minus 94, the first term was minus four, and I'm trying to solve for this n and minus one times d. So I expanded it, I simplified, and I found that n was 16. Once you have n is 16, you can go back and do the second formula, which is the sum. So I want, what is the sum of 16 terms? Because I know this term now is 16, the 16th term. So 16 divided by 2 times a, which was minus 4, or t1, it might say t1, um, plus the last term is minus 94. So it gives me minus 98 times 8 gives me minus 784. Okay, sorry about the little delay here that you had to switch lessons, but sometimes Apple just decides to do things without asking you or in your middle of something else. Okay, number three. In a series of 50 terms, the 17th term is 53 and the 8th term is 86 and you're asked to find the sum of the series. Now, the problem is this should say in an in an arithmetic because if you don't know if it's arithmetic or geometric you're going to you're going to have some problems so I have 50 terms and I'm trying to figure out what number what is the sum of 50 terms in the sequence so I have the 17th term and the 8th term now remember when we did these in 7.1 you could figure out um, you could figure out what your d value was by figuring out how far did I go and how much did I add. Remember doing that? So you had in the arithmetic, you, you subtracted these, you subtracted these, and then you divided by this difference. So let's do that. I'm going to first, though, I'm going to write out the formula. So I want the sum of n terms is equal to n over 2 times 2a plus n minus 1 times d. So again, always start with a formula so that you can figure out what you still need to solve for. So showing that at least you know what a and d are. See, I don't have a. I don't know what a is. I have the 8th and the 17th term. And I don't know what the d is. But I do know that I want to find n the sum of 50. So I'm going to put n is 50 here. So I need to find a and d. So let's write that here. We need a and d. We need a and d. And I've been given these two. So remember when you're going from the eighth term to the 17th term, so 17 minus 8 means I did nine additions of some number. So what is the number that I added or subtracted here? So I went from 50, I went from 86 to 53. So obviously I'm subtracting something. 
So what's 86 minus 53? Well, that would be 33. And it doesn't make sense. 33, the 17th and the 28th. Okay, that's the problem. They should have been the 28th term. I was going to say this isn't going to make any sense because I'm going to get a fraction. Okay, so I have 28. Let's erase this. Start again. So I have 28 minus 17 is 11. And I'm going from 53 to 86. So I'm actually adding something, right? So 86 minus 53 is 33. And 33 divided by 11 additions gives me 3. So I added 3 11 times. And you could start here and you could do it if you want to figure that out. But this is, this is your proof that you know that d equals 3. So I'm going to write here d equals 3. And that's going to be important because I'm going to use that in my equation here. So I have n is equal to 50 and I have d is equal to 3. So now I still need to find, I still need to find out what a is. So if I have the d and I need to find a, I can use one of these terms to solve for a. Right, so let's use the old formula, tn equals a plus n minus 1 times d. And I'm going to use, I'm going to use this one. You can use either to figure out what a will be, because I know that the 53 is the 17th, so that gives me this number, right? 53 is going to go here. The d, I figured out, that's going to go here, and the n is going to be 17. So I'm going to write that here. n is 17. The nth term, or the 17th term, let me write that, was 53. And I already figured out what d is. d is 3. So I'm going to find out what a is now. So I plug in 53 is equal to a plus um, 17 minus 1. Write them all in here. Times d. And that gives me 53 is a plus 16 times 3. 16 times 3 is, what, 48. I subtract 48. So 53 minus 48 is going to be 5. So clever. Okay, so now you've got a is 5. That's great. So I have a is 5. And now all of a sudden I have everything I need to solve this little sum here. So I'm going to write it in red because I want the sum of 50 terms is going to be 50 over 2 times 2 times a is 5 plus n is 50 minus 1 times d. Okay, so let me just cut to the chase here and see what the number is. It comes up to 25 times times uh, 157. This is really doesn't matter to you, does it? Just get on with this, Miss Havrat, please. Just do another question. 3925. I think it might be 5. Let's just quickly check on the calculator to make sure I wrote that right. Uh, 3925. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay, so that's number 3. Number 4. Let's take a look at this one. In an arithmetic series, t15 is 43. The sum of 15 terms is 120. Find the sum of 20 terms. Ooh, so I don't have the 20th term. I have the sum of 15 terms, and I have the 15th term. So neither do I know um, t1. What's t1 going to be? So I don't know... Let's write what you, you do know and you don't know. So you have t15 is 43. You need, if you use this formula, so here's your two, two options to find the sum, right? So if I knew the first term, no, don't know the first term. Do I know the last term? No, I don't know the last term. I do for this, right? I know this is t15 is 120. But I'm trying to find sum of 20. So I'm going to 
just leave this aside for a minute till I figure out what A and D are. Because if I know what A and D are, it's easy to plug in 20 into this to figure out my final solution for this. Okay, so let's go back to figuring out how we're going to figure out what T1 is and, and D. So if I use this formula here, I know that the sum of 15 terms is 120. So let's write that sum of 15 is 120. So I can plug in 120 here, right? 120 for my sum. And I have 15 terms. So 15 times, now here's where I have a problem, right? Because I don't know what T1 is. But that's what I'm trying to find. And T15 was 43. Divided by 2. I'm going to get to a pencil here so it doesn't get too messy. So now all you have to do is solve this little equation and you can find T1. right? So again, what you know is you would need to know A for the sum of 20. You would have, let's just write that in here so we don't waste time. So I have 20 over 2. 2 times, oops, don't have the A, plus... 20 minus 1 times D. So I don't have the D either, do I? But I can find the A very easily here first. So I plug this in. <coughs> I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of this 2. So it gives me 15 T1s plus, oops, I don't know what 43 times 15 is, 645. And 240 minus 645 is going to be minus 405 is equal to 15 T1s. And 405 divided by 15 gives me negative 27. So the first term is minus 27. <coughs> okay, so I know the first term. But I still need to know what D is, because in this formula, so T1, I'm going to put in minus 27 here, figured that out from here, but I still need D. So to find D, I'm going to go back to one of those basic formulas. So T, T n equals A plus n minus 1 times D, right? That's what we used in arithmetic sequences. So I'm going to use the, this term here. I'm going to plug that in. So I have the nth term is 43. My a is minus 27 plus, that was the 15th term, times d. Add 27 to 43. That gives you 43, 53, 60, 70. 70 is equal to 15 minus 1 is 14 D. So D is equal to 5. 70 divided by 14. Right, we'll just do that like this. So I get D is 5. So now my sum here is going to be really easy to solve. So I'm going to plug in a 5 here. So I found this one. I found the A value. And I'm all set to figure out the answer. So 10, that's minus 54, um, plus 19 times 5, 19 times 5, mm, probably could have done that in my head too, 95, 95, 95 minus 54 is going to be 41, and I get 410. Okay, so that was a little tricky because you had to find, you have to kind of play with these. Write down the equations, figure out what you know, how you can solve for all the little parts that you need to find the sum. Okay, now the other way you could have done this is once you had this, you could have found the 20th term, and then you could have used the other formula where you have the first and the last terms. Okay, that would have got you to the same place. Okay, one more question, and then we're going to close. Anasha was asked to count the number of seats in an auditorium. The auditorium had um, 25 rows of seats. He counted 50, is 
that's supposed to be 54 or 59 59 let's make that a little more clear 59 seats in the last row each row forward had two fewer seats how many seats were there so your sequence would be like this right 59 well the series we're going to add them because we want to know how many seats so 59 plus 57 plus 55 plus dot 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 and you're going to do that 25 times so if you're in a test situation and you just figure out all these numbers and then add them up you're not going to get any marks for that well, maybe your teacher will be nice and give you one because you knew what a common difference was but you need to use the formulas that you've been given so this one isn't so hard we know our a value a was 59 and we know what d is d is minus two so let's go to the formula s n equals n over two times 2a plus n minus 1 times d and I plug in um, there's 25 rows so I want the sum of 25 right so n is equal to 25 rows 25 rows here so that's my n so I say sum of 25 is 25 over 2 times now, remember, if you get an answer that says, you know, you had uh, 15 and a half seats, you know that you've made some fatal errors somewhere. 2 times 51. This one's really easy, though. Nice, straightforward. And D is minus 2. Okay, so let's just leave this over 2 for now, because it's probably going to divide nicely. 2 times 59 is 108. And 25 minus 1 is 24. 24 times minus 2 is minus 48. And 108 minus 48 is going to give us 60. So 25 times 2 times 60. This goes into here 30 times. You do all this in your head. 3 times 25 is 75 and add a 0. So there were 750. Did I do that right? 108 minus 48 is 70, not 60. Uh, some days. Cell phone goes down, everything. Okay, so that gives us 35 times 25. Let's go into here, 35. And 25 times 35 is going to give you 875. Bingo, we're done. That's it. That's part two of arithmetic series. The next one will be geometric series. And then um, we'll be on to finance. Talk to you soon. Give me a like if you liked it. Bye for now.